In this lecture, we're going to talk about applications of normal distribution. There are many applications of normal distributions around us. For example, blood pressure of adults at a certain age, length of time of a football game, speed of cars on certain road, price of similar vehicles, monthly income, and honestly, many, many more. Think about a bag of cookies. The filling process of dispensing cookies with a weight that follows normal distribution has a mean of 510 grams and a standard deviation of 5 grams. A bag of cookies is considered underweight if it weighs less than 500 grams and is considered overweight if it weighs more than 520 grams. We want to find the probability that the randomly selected bag is underweight. We also want to find the probability that the randomly selected bag is overweight. And then we want to find the probability that a randomly selected bag weighs between 505 and 520 grams. Well, we have a normal probability distribution with the mean of 510 and a standard deviation of 5 based on the information provided. The first question was, what's the probability that a randomly selected bag is underweight? Which means the probability that X, the weight of the randomly selected bag, is below 500. We're going to draw, label, and shade our desired region. Now we can use table or technology to find this probability. I'm going to be using TI commands, normal CDF with the lower, upper, mean, and a standard deviation. And the probability of that is 0 0.023. Now, what's the probability that a randomly selected bag is overweight? A bag is considered overweight if it weighs more than 520 grams. So now we have to find the shaded area, which represents probability that X is greater than 520. Using, again, either chart or te different technology, which I'm using normal CDF from a TI command, and that probability is 0 0.023. Now, the probability that a randomly selected bag weighs between 505 and 520 grams, that means X is between 505 and 520. After drawing and shading our desired region, Again, I'm going to be using TI command normal CDF. I have my lower, upper, mean, and a standard deviation. And that probability is 0.819. 
If you were to round this to the nearest percent, this would have been about 82%. Now the data provided and collected by a company suggests that the average speed of cars on certain part of freeway 405 is about 16 miles per hour. Let's suppose the speed of cars has a normal distribution with the average speed of 16 miles per hour and a standard deviation of 2 miles per hour. If we were to randomly select a car, what's the probability that the speed would be between 15 to 20 miles per hour? We also want to find the speed of cars that separates the top 5% from the rest of the cars. So based on the information provided, we have a normal probability distribution with a mean of 16 and a standard deviation 2. The probability that a randomly selected car has the speed between 15 and 20 is having probability that x falls between 15 and 20. which is displayed here in the shaded region. Again, we're going to use either chart or technology to find this. Using normal CDF command, we have our lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation. And that probability is 0.669 to the nearest percent would have been about 67%. Now to find the speed that separates the top 5% from the rest of the cars, the top 5% would be the area on the right to be 0.05 and the area on the left will be 0.95, 95%. So we're looking for P95. P95 separates the bottom 95% from the top 5%. So we are technically looking for P95 in this problem. To get the P95, we are going to use inverse norm. We're using inverse norm because the area is given and we want to know the value that gives us that area. You can also think of the area as the probability. With the inverse norm, you need the left area, the mean and standard deviation, so I'm using inverse norm TI command and that value is 19.3. So probability that a car has a speed below 19.3 would be 0.95 and probability that a randomly selected car has a speed above 19.3 is 0 0.05. So basically, 5% of the cars have a speed above 19.3 miles per hour. Now it's been reported in California that the average salary for teachers in California is 
about 60,583, which is way higher than the average salary for teachers nationwide. So suppose the monthly salary of teachers with no more than five years teaching experience in California has a normal distribution with a mean of $6,250 per month and a standard deviation of $320 per month. What's the probability that a randomly selected teacher in California that satisfies those criteria makes less than 6,000 or more than $6,500 per month? Also, we want to find range of salaries that separates the top, that separates the middle 80% from the rest. So again, based on the information provided, we have a normal probability distribution with the mean of 6250 and a standard deviation of 320. In the first question, we want to find probability that a randomly selected teacher makes less than 6000 or above $6,500 per month. So we want X to be below 6000 or X to be above 6500 So I draw my normal curve, I label it, and I shade my desired section. So the orange section we don't want, the rest of it we do want. We know the total area under the normal curve is equal to one. So probability that X is below 6,000, the left side, or X is above 6,500, the right side, is the same as subtracting the portion that we don't want from total probability one. So this would be one minus normal CDF for the region that we don't want. And the region that we don't want has a lower value of 6,000, upper value of 6,500 with the mean and standard deviation that was given. Doing the computation piece by piece, our final answer is 0.435. So probability that a randomly selected teacher in California makes below 6,000 or above $6,500 a month is 0.435 in percentage is 43.5%. Rounded to the nearest whole percent, this would be about 44%. Now, to find range of values, range of salaries rounded to the nearest 10 that separates the middle 80% from the rest. So these two values will separate the middle 80%, meaning the probability of that would be 0.8. So after we draw our normal curve, the middle 80%, it takes away from the total area 1, that gives us 20% or 0.2. But since normal curve is symmetric, 10% would be on the right and 10% would be on the left. So our task is to figure out x1 and x2. Now X1 is the same as P10 because 10% falls below it. 
using the inverse norm and then rounding it to the nearest 10, that value is 5,840. Now similarly, x2 will be the same as p90. 80% is in the middle and 10% is to the left. So that's a total of 90% to the left of x2. So that's why x2 is equal to p90. Using the inverse norm, now the left area is 0.9 with the given mean and a standard deviation. And that value is 6,660. So what we concluded from this example that about 80% of teachers in California make between 5840 and $6,660. 10% make more than $6,660 a month and 10% make below $5,840 a month. I hope this presentation helped you understand how to use uh, normal probability distribution in some applications.